So, as I was just explaining, this is going to be a um, windswept, stormy seascape. The colour of the sea and the sky and even the sand really um, changes when there's a stormy sky. I mean, here the sea looks close to black. It's a very interesting colour with some browny, greeny grey undertones to it. When I paint seascapes like this, what I'm looking to do is really get a sense of drama and atmosphere in it. As I was saying, the image that we've, we're, we're working from today is one I found online. Um, and I chose it really because it's more about the composition of it um, than anything else. I have lots of um, photos I've taken myself, but I was looking for a particular composition and this is the one I was looking for. So I wanted to have the, the sea coming in almost like a triangle, cutting across. We will use a lot of uh, creative license with this one. Really what we're doing is looking for the basics of the composition and that's why it being a low resolution, low resolution image doesn't really matter because we've got our essentials there. What we're going to be looking to do, again working with the primary colours, is to create a lot of darks, so greys and browns and sort of almost blacks as well. Um, and again, we're just going to use our limited palette to do that. If I'm painting this with oils or even gouache and I'm using more than a limited palette, I would probably just use a combination of ultramarine blue, maybe some yellow ochre and some burnt sienna as well. So that would be a primary, color, primary palette of sorts. Your blue being your blue, the burnt sienna being your red and the yellow ochre being your yellow because we don't really need bright colours in this painting, they would be sufficient to create it. You can get those earthier tones and dark tones and greys much easier. But we're working with our sort of high key palette still of this bright yellow, bright red and bright blue. And the reason I've chosen to do this is to show that you can, with these colours, create those um, deep, darker tones. So I'm going to be using primarily this round synthetic brush here. Now the first thing, like with most of the paintings, is we want to just get a sense of where things are, where the composition is. And what I want to do is I just want to sort of sketch it out slightly first. And to do that, I usually use a, a, a neutral colour, and that neutral colour is going to be a mix of all of the primary colours. First, I'll start with some yellow and add into it a little bit of red to create an orange. I want to create a, a sort of a, a burnt sienna or burnt umber type colour. So I've created this orange here. Now, the complementary of orange is blue. And when I add a little bit of that blue into this colour here, it's created more of a, a green. Now, I want it to be slightly redder. so. I'm adding some more red to it. And I've created what's close to an earth colour. We used this when we were painting the pumpkins last week. And 
and we're going to use it just as a way of sketching out our composition. So here we run a very thin paint mix. So I've dipped it into the water. And I'm going to, first of all, look at where my horizon line is. It's not quite two thirds or close to two thirds. So let's just do a line across. Again, I want it very thin. Just do a line across there around about where two thirds is. Now these lines will eventually disappear underneath the rest of the painting, but it's important to mark things out. So I've done my line for where the horizon is. It's about that. The next thing I want to do, I'm coming across, and it actually sort of finishes down here somewhere. So I want to create this kind of triangle right across here, coming up to the point to meet the horizon there. Again, we don't have to get it absolutely perfect because we will be adding layers over the top. It's just to get some markers down. And then I'm going to look at this bit of cliff that's coming down here. And that is around about halfway up the page. And I'm going to bring that shape, which is going like a triangle down to nearly the middle here. And really, that's the basic composition. And all we need at the moment is just to put those markers in. Now, often in paintings, I sort of switch around what I'm doing. Sometimes I'll say I'll put the sky elements in first and then build around it but in this case what I'm going to do first is put the, the darkest areas in the darkest area and looking at it coming across is the sea it's this thin sliver of deep dark color so to make that what I'm going to do I'm going to take some blue And again, working quite thin into the blue, I'm going to add a touch of yellow, just a little bit, just to turn that blue slightly towards green. And then also add just a touch of red to it too. And it's created this very deep, close to black grey colour. And I'll use this as my basis for the sea. And just dipping my brush in the water and getting it nice and fluid. And I'll start over here and just draw a horizon line right across. there and then looking at how it then sort of a triangle comes out is I'm just going to draw a line down there and then use that colour just to fill up the space in there. Eventually, we'll be putting some kind of surf over here with white paint. But for the meantime, what I'm going to do is just rinse my brush out and just dry it off slightly. And then at the bottom of this dark triangle, let's just take the wet brush and kind of just soften the bottom edge of it, 
bringing it down like so so you get this sort of gray effect now that'll work really well then when we put white on top of it later because it will have a, an undercolor to it and still want to sort of remain true to that triangular shape if we can so that's our first layer of the C. Now looking at what is the next darkest colour and it is the cliffs coming down here. It's the darker aspects of those cliffs. Now they're closer to a brown colour. So what I will do, and I'll mix that colour again just in case yours is dried. This. So to create that colour, we want to again try and create something that is close to a a burnt umber or a burnt sienna. And to do that, we take some yellow, and into the yellow, we add some red, and some more yellow in there to create this orange colour. And it's not a vivid orange, you can see it's slightly um, a bit of burnt kind of orange. And into that, I'm going to add oranges complementary, which is blue. So when you put blue and orange next to each other, they make each other stand out. But when you add them together in a mix, they cancel each other out to create this sort of dark brownie colour. Now into this, because you can see it's leaning slightly more towards orange, so I'm going to add a little bit more blue, so I want it nice and dark. I don't know if you can see on the camera, but it's veering slightly too much towards green now what that tells me is that there's too much yellow in it still blue and yellow make green and even when there's some red in there it tends to lean towards the yellow to make the green so that tells me what i want to do to bring it closer to a kind of a earthy brown is add a touch of touch more red to it. So I've added that touch of red to it, and now it's leaning much more towards that kind of orange colour I was looking for. Add a bit more blue. And it's starting to really darken up nicely, close to a almost a, a raw umber. Now what I'll do is just dip my brush in the water. I'm going to look for those darker aspects on the cliffs and following the shape that the cliff is actually coming down, I'm just going to put some markings on there, with this wet brush coming down like so. And these would be the darker areas. Again, we'll come over it later, just to add a bit more definition. But now I've added those darker areas, similar to what I've done with the sea. Let's just dip the brush in water. And knock some of the excess off. And then on the edges of that dark color, you just use a wet brush just to sort of drag some of the, the colour out and around it. So you're left then with these dark elements coming down, but all around it is the similar colour, but with a different tone, it's lighter.
and we'll just let that settle for the moment, that area there. Now looking at the space that's between the, the wave and the cliff, it is a beach, but again, because our, our uh, photo is slightly blurred, it's difficult to tell if it's water or it's sand. But what we do see is colour, and we see sort of these grey kind of tones going on. So to make that, I'm going to rely again on that colour I've mixed, which is that very dark kind of earthy orange. And to it, I'm just going to add a touch more blue. <coughs> and here's where I'm going to use some white for the first time as well. So I'm picking up a bit of white. I'm putting it into this mix here. If you've run out of that, that mix, I'll just run through it again, how we, how we made it. So we took some yellow, and into the yellow, we added some red to make an orange. And then into that orange, we add blue to turn it into a, kind of an earthy brown and a similar thing has happened to what happened before turn green which tells me there's too much yellow and not enough red so i'm adding some more red to that to make that earthy orange and then adding bits of blue to it to turn it into a dark kind of gray color And then I'm adding some white to it just to tone it down slightly, put in a base colour for where our sand is. So here I'm not looking at the difference between the, the tones and colours in the sand. I just want to put this washing to bridge the gap between the cliff and the sea. We can adjust this as we go along. I can already see mine is still a little bit too green. It's a very thin wash and it'll act as an undercolour for us. Right. So our next step is going to be to move up into the sky as we build this picture piece by piece until we start to get some unity and then we adjust and tweak that as we go along. I'm just going to empty my water because I want some cleaner water for the sky. Um, so I'll be back in one minute.
okay. So I changed the water really because there was quite a lot of yellow in those previous mixes and I really don't want any of that yellow up in the sky. For the time being, we will uh, um, do some mixes between yellow and violet at points. But our first step is to really sort of get the foundation of the sky down. It's quite different to some of the skies we've done before, um, where this one is majority dark with elements of light in it. The first thing we want to do is we want to just again, just to fill our space a little bit. And to do that, we're going to make a light grey. First thing I want to do is just to make a kind of a, a ready orange. Like so, and then to make some blue and just mix those together like that. You see, it's a, turned into a, a grey colour already. It's a little bit too towards black for me, so I'm going to add a bit more blue to it. So now I've got this kind of grey blue. It looks black on the screen, but it's actually a grey blue colour. I'm just going to dip my brush again and pick up some white and add the white into it to make this lovely light blue. It's another reason why we never need to buy black because these uh, blacks and greys can be mixed so easily with the primary colours. So I've got this very nice grey here. Whilst I've got it in this mix, I'm going to do in one corner of it, I'm going to add some more white to make it lighter. like that and then in another corner I'm just going to have to touch more blue to it so I've got a nice tonal variety there between them and then add a little bit more white towards that end. Now we want to layer this in relatively wet but not watercolour wet. It, it needs to um, be able to move and to, to lay down on the paper easy, but we don't want it sort of bleeding and um, you know mixing with the others too much. So the first colour I'm going to start with is the corner where I've added just a touch more blue. And with this, I'm going to, above my, where my sea horizon is, I'm just going to try and do a straight line right across there. Bring it all the way up to the, the cliff. So that's the beginning of our sky. And now with that same colour, just above it in sort of circular motions, it's going to drag that colour upwards. The beauty of doing it like this is you can see some of the under tone or under colour from the paper coming through and that helps give elements of light for us without actually having to add more white to it. Now the next thing I'm going to do is go to this darker colour here 
and I'm going to look up in my top corner up here because it's to me it looks like it's probably the darkest cloud again just a touch of water and with a kind of a circular brushy motions I'm just going to create this cloud here bring it right down Okay, and this is the first layer, so don't worry about getting it perfect or the shapes perfect. I'm just looking for tones at the moment. Now, I've still got this mix here and what I want to do is I want to add quite a bit more white to it, a little bit more water as well. So we've still got this grey, but we're adding more white to really kind of bulk it up and lighten it a bit. I'll dip my brush again. And now what I want to do is I really want to just kind of fill this space here and a lot of it's going to be through the brush strokes I'm using so I'm using these circular but side to side brush strokes I never paint um, horizontally in just lines like that it's always kind of an all over thing and in this way you get that real diversity in uh, the surface Okay, we're just filling, filling the space, almost providing a bit of a backdrop. Okay, so that's our basic, our first layers. We've laid out the composition. <clears throat> We've blocked in the colors and tones where they want to be. Um, our next stage will be adding more depth, more texture, and really trying to help define some areas a little bit more from the surf to the sky to the beach as well. But what I want to do is just let this settle for five or six minutes. I'm gonna go and get a drink um, and then come back. So I'll see you all soon and you can ask questions or anything when you come back, all right.
Hi everyone. I just got myself a lemon sip. Oh, I wanted to show you this. Um, ah. It's called, it's from Boots, Chesty Cough and Congestion Relief. Ah. <laughs> now there's, there's all sorts of caveats about, um, you know, if you're allergic and stuff like that on the, on the box, but I bought it yesterday because I'm going through very similar to what you're going through. Oh, yeah. And um, it did dry me up. So it's right. Chesty cough and congestion relief. Um, uh, good. And it definitely stopped my nose running. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah, it's it. You know, it's a strange one because I've gone from um, you know really runny nose to then lots of sneezing to a dry tickly cough to the next day a chesty cough. Mm. Very strange. Um, okay. But um. I'm on my way out of it now. You know, I can function, which is which is the key thing. And I, yeah. I find with the with the lemon sips as well. I mean, it's it's got the paracetamol. I don't like to take lots of paracetamol, but it kind of it's often just enough to, to um, keep you going. And the steam as well is is mm. nice from, from a yeah. hot cup. I know mine's lasted two weeks. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it's it's some you know it's something going around. You know, I'm thankful it's not COVID, uh, but yeah. it's. I did yeah. I did test myself for COVID. Yeah, you know I, I just didn't know. I mean, it was. I don't think I've ever had such a bad cold actually. Yeah, yeah, I haven't for a long for a long time. No. Um, you know, and it's all of the family have got it as well. So. Oh. I don't know who the culprit is. So, you know, I tend to blame the children for bringing it back from school. But <laughs> yeah, well, probably. But you know, never mind. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Anyway, what I will do, I'll make the screen bit bigger. Thanks for that. Sir. Thank you. Um, I'll make the screen bigger again. Is any, have you got any questions at all about uh, any of the process? Or? No, it's really clear. I'm good, running, good. Running out of paint. <laughs> oh, what are you running low on, Sarah? I'm, 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 well, I'm going to the National Gallery tomorrow, and there's a paint shop nearby, so I'll, buy, I'll top up with. Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah. But basically, the the, the colours that we're using. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Well, hopefully, hopefully, we'll uh, you'll have enough to survive this painting. Wonderful. All right, everyone, I'll put this screen back on. There we go. So we've done basically our first layer. There was this term in painting called uh, blocking in. Um, and really what you're trying to do is, rather than thinking about going in with any detail or anything, you, you block in the shapes and the colours. Um, very rarely we get it exactly, you know, how a photograph looks, but I tend to paint as if I were painting outside, um, where all of these elements are changing all of the time. So the source photo is always important because it gives you the basic compositions and the colours and tones, but really it is, um, less and less important um, as we move on. Now we've got the, the basics there. If you were painting outside, again, everything would change. You know, those clouds may have sort of passed and it was nice and sunny again, or more storm clouds have come, the sea has changed colour, all of that kind of stuff. So you, you can't fix yourself too much or become too attached to a photograph. Um, but anyway, this is this is our basics, and now it's time to start adding in some more detail, and that's more about tone and depth rather than actual details of things. Now, the first area I want to look at is really the beach area because it's totally, uh, you know, the colour I've used there is just the undertone, so it's totally kind of off. Um, now, to create that kind of browny grey red colour, we're going to try and do something 
here and again it's it's going to use complementary colors and i'm going to just have a little play around to see how it works so the first thing i'm going to do is just wipe away some of this gray the first thing i do is take some blue touch of water on it and here we start making our paints slightly thicker to go over the, the more watery type areas. <clears throat> now, into that blue, I'm going to add a touch of red, and it's turning it into a kind of a violet-ish colour. Don't want to add too much red. There we go. And now into that, I'm going to add a touch of yellow in this sort of grey ish colour. Now the area I'm thinking about and looking at is actually this area up here which is this sort of I think it's wet sand. Um, uh, I created this grey but I want to add just a touch more red to it just to sort of warm it up a bit. Yeah, that's getting close. You can see that colour there, that it's, it's a nice grey, which we'll actually mix again after to use up in the sky. I just want to add some white to that. No, that will be great for up in the sky, but I'm not thinking about the sky at the moment. I'm thinking about that bit of coast. So now I've got this colour, I'm going to add a bit more yellow to it. And a touch more red. I don't know touch more water and just beneath again where my surf line is going to be I want to carefully just add some of this grey colour to my beach. I'm using the side of my brush now and just dragging it over. I don't want to make it too thick over the top of that. bringing it up to where the surf line is and then with a relatively dry brush just dragging this dry colour over my sandy area and leaving a lot of that under colour coming through Okay. Richard, mine is very green. Um, do I need more red? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, so if it's if it's veering towards green, just add a little bit more red to it, and it should sort of bring it back around. You know, you're often wrestling with colours. Yeah. Uh, so if it ever goes to, to towards green, you know that there's too, too much yellow in there. Yeah, but that little bit of red will help just balance it out a little bit. So now I've just added that little layer of it over the top. Okay, and I'm going to let that sit for the moment. It's um, it's that area is going to need a, I think, a little bit more attention as we move on. But what I'm quite excited about now was was that mix that was created 
um, because what we can do with it is use some of that up in the sky. Now, I'm going to attempt to mix it again, if I can remember how I've done it. So it was, oh, my electric keeps going out for a moment. Just give me a second. My girlfriend was hoovering and uh, she kept uh, knocking the lead out. Um, so going back to this, what I want to do is get some of that kind of grey up in the sky and then mix it by using blue and into the blue uh, just a touch of red. We want to keep it within the kind of a sphere of blue. Red can easily overpower this blue. So here we've got this nice violet colour. Trying to mix a little bit more. And into that, I added just a touch of yellow. <clears throat> Excuse me. So by adding the yellow into this mix, what it's doing is working with complementary colours again. So we have blue and red, which makes violet or purple, and it's complementary colour. That means when they're next to each other, they make each other stand out, is yellow. But when you add a bit of that yellow into the mix, it actually cancels each out. And you're left with this really interesting grey colour that leans slightly towards violet. Now, I want to really tone that down. So I've added a lot of white to it. And a touch more yellow, just to make it more gray. So up in the top here of my sky, I'm going to try some of this grey. And that is this cloud coming down here. Need a bit more white in it now. And now I've lightened that, I'm going to look down at my horizon line. <clears throat> Touch more water. And just take this grey again over the horizon line. And then as we've done before, just <clears throat> drag that colour upwards. After a while when mixing greys and looking at greys in the sky or wherever, 
you start to see them taking on a certain what they call bias so it may take on a, a kind of a vi slight violet type bias <clears throat> as these are or they might be slightly more towards brown or towards red or towards blue and it's you know one of those things that you just start noticing over time when you learn more about colour and how you mix certain colours, you start to see it in things. Now, the next step is I want to, whilst I've still got this mix, is just to add a lot more white into it, just to make it as light as possible. And I'm going to also add a touch more blue because I can see it becoming slightly more blue as it goes upwards. A bit more water. And then starting in this area here, like we filled before, is just dragging my brush over. Trying to fill in some of this area. And I'm leaving some of those undertones coming through from the previous layer. And that's all about the brushwork side of the brush and just kind of roll it in circular motions or <coughs> scrub it over the surface. And even bring some of it over that dark cloud up there as well. And now, because it's much lighter up in that top area there, I'm going to put some white out, some more white, and just dip my brush in water and pick up a little bit of that white and with quite a wet fluid brush start in my top corner up here and again with those similar brush movements on the side of the brush just bring some of that lighter colour down into this here And you can look on your photograph where you've got those lighter areas. So there's a sort of a light cloud here. And there's a little bit down here as well. We'll add some more of these elements in the next layer, but you can just mark a few out now. Right, so that's our next layer of the sky. What we'll do now is come back down into the foreground. And I think that the next thing I'll look at is the sea. I'm trying to <clears throat> shore up the sea a little bit. I'm just going to have a sip of lemon sip.
So the first thing I'll do, I want to get rid of a bit of this colour on my palette. Just wipe away a little bit. So when making our C a little bit uh, stronger, we want to mix a colour that was similar to the first colour that we made for the C, which was a, a blue with a little bit of yellow added to it. Now normally when we make greens, we add blue into yellow, um, just so that it becomes greener quicker, but when we're making a very dark, almost aqua blue colour, we want to actually add the green, add the yellow into the blue. So it creates this lovely deep colour here. And into that, we added just a touch of red. And what the red does, it helps create a real lovely dark colour. I'm realising that I need to put a bit more blue on my pile here. So that was blue with a little bit of yellow in it and then a touch of red just to really darken it down. I'm just going to dip the tip of my brush in the water. I don't want this too wet. And what I'll do is again follow the sea horizon line and just create this bold line across. You could see I'm not sure if you can on the camera, but because the, the paint isn't too wet, what it's doing, it's, it's leaving sort of brush marks on there and letting a bit of that under colour still come through. And that's what we want. We don't want it to... Um, we don't want it to cover the whole of the thing, the whole of the surface we want these little bits of those under layer coming through. Okay, so I've put that darker line in for the scene now. Now into my mix that I've already got, I'm going to add a touch more yellow to it to turn it even greener still. And then add a touch more red which will help shift it towards a kind of a browning colour. And then into that, I'm going to add a bit of white. This is going to be for the colour, but it's just beneath that darker line. There's not much of it in the sea. But if I, again, with a relatively dry brush, just drag this kind of just beneath that darker shade. You can see how the layers from underneath the elements of it are just popping through there. And that's part of creating these layered paintings. They have a kind of a history to them, to the surface. Right. So I'm happy with the seed like that for the moment. I'm going to get rid of this colour. I'm 
any good. And the next thing I want to do is come back to my cliff. Now I've added the darker aspect to the sea. It's made me realise that the dark that I've already got in my cliffs isn't quite dark enough. So to create that, I'm going to take some yellow and add a touch of red to it to create an orange colour. And then I'm going to take some blue, more blue than yellow, uh, than orange, sorry, and mix that into it. Now, immediately it's made a green, which tells me that there's too much yellow in it. So I need to add some more red. So immediately what it does, it cancels that green out and it creates this lovely dark colour. Can add a little bit more red to it. So here, what we're going to do rather than um, what we've done last time, which was to use it very fluid, here we're going to try and use it again slightly dry like we did with the sea. So I'm just dipping the very tip of my brush in the water just to make sure I can move the paint around. And then with these like diagonal marks which mirror the shape of the cliff is just drag the brush over kind of where those dark elements are i can see already that's made the world of difference to it some of the under colors coming through but you've got these much darker tones on top don't have to get them perfect, but you can have a suggestion of them being there. Now what I'll do, just dip in my brush in the water again. And to that mix, whilst it's still workable. I'm going to add a touch more red. A touch more yellow as well to try and bring it back closer to a kind of an orange colour, an orange brown. And with that I just want to sort of go and fill up some of my spaces. I also, looking at my cliff here, I want it to really come much more down into this beach area. I'm noticing too that some of the colours in here are quite similar to the colour that's actually at the bottom of the picture here. So whilst I've still again got this mix workable, just want to add a little bit more red to it. Again, a little bit more yellow. Dip my brush in the water. And then just at the bottom of the page here, just slowly kind of track this area up that's beneath the shoreline. OK, 
and then leaving some of the layers beneath coming through. So we've got the kind of the darker elements now of the the beach and the shoring. I think the next thing I want to do before I go back up into the sky is to actually add some of the surfing. And this is really going to help us because at the moment, I feel that the surf is, is the only area down here that needs real attention to move the painting forward. It's difficult to gauge painting sometimes when you're missing your lightest area. And this will be a lightest area, apart from a couple of elements in the sky. And to do this, we're going to rely on a little bit of texture. And I'm going to take some white paint straight out of the tube. Here we want our brush to be nice and dry. So I've dried mine off. I'm just going to mix some of this white onto my brush. It's very rarely pure white in nature. So the fact that it's picking up some of the undercolour that's left on my palette, I'm kind of happy with that. But there's little bits of grey and red going into it. So I've got my brush here and I've really mixed this white into it. I'm going to start with the widest area which is on the bottom right here and I'm just dragging my brush over the surface like so leaving again a lot of that undercolour to come through and you see the difference when you work with a, a dry brush that it doesn't blend in to what's beneath it merely just sits on top and it's all about the amount of pressure you're applying to how much paint goes down. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to try, and this is where I ideally need a smaller brush, I'm going to try and take the, this uh, white all the way up here to this corner where our uh, shawl is starting. Again, just drag it right down like that. I put a little bit too much on there, so I'm just going to, just with my nail, just drag some of it off, scratch some of it off. And bring some of it over the dark line of the scene there. So the hard the harder you press, the more paint goes down. The softer you press, the more you can kind of drag it just over your surface, like so.
I'm going to put a bit more white out. Gosh, dries so quickly. It's one of the, the really nice things about it, but it's uh, it's also quite tricky to work out. <coughs> so now I've put that first kind of layer in. What I'm doing is picking up just a bit more white straight out to the tube on the end of my brush. And in certain areas, I'm going to add a bit of texture. It'll be difficult to see on the camera, but just over my surf here, I'm taking some thicker elements of paint, and just almost doing another layer on top. And I want more down here. I'm using much sort of shorter strokes this time, just to layer a bit of texture on top. I can see as well that my C, this area, my surf side goes much further into the sea. Now, and again, this is something that's going to be a bit um, idiosyncratic to gouache paint. It's harder to do with acrylic. Is I've rinsed my brush out. And what I want to do is just in a couple of areas where the sea and the surf are meeting is just do a slight blend with a wet brush. I'm going to start over here, right where my horizon line ends close to the cliff and just try and drag the sea a bit like that as it was ending too abruptly for me. And then also where the surface meeting the sea, just again with a wet brush, soften that edge just a slight bit. Like so. Okay, now we've added that element. It helps us then see where lighter and darker areas could be in the painting. First thing I'm going to do is actually go back up into the sky. Quite a lot of work can be done down here as well, but we're going to go up into the sky and create a, a bit more drama. So I want to work on those light areas and darker areas. To do that, I'm actually going to start with the light and then work towards the dark. So I've got a relatively damp brush now and I'm going to pick up some of the white that I had out. And up in my top corner up here is I'm going to quite loosely just add some of this white up into the sky. I'm focusing on this area as being the area of light and this area as being the area of shade in the sky, just to create that sense of drama and also perspective and a, a little bit of tension too.
I notice also just around here above the horizon, there are these other elements of light coming through. I'm just taking my brush and dragging a bit of that lighter shade over. And by adding the lighter shade, what it does, it automatically then makes things around it look darker. You can see with just that little bit of light there above the horizon, it it makes that seem slightly more natural. The the area between the horizon and the sky. We also see in the, a touch of blue around this middle area. So again, with my relatively large pile of white, what I'm going to do is just take a touch of blue and mix that in. Get my brush in the water and then have a few brush strokes of blue in there and a bit more. Okay, I'm just dragging it over the surface to create those elements of blue rather than overwhelming it. Very subtle, but it helps to build um, a deeper sense of um, perspective and one could work on it for ages building it and refining it i'm actually going to bring a little bit of that down here as well right so now We've added that in. I think it's time to add some slightly darker greys. So I've taken again into my <coughs> mix of white and blue. I'm going to add a bit more blue and then a, a touch of red to make that violet colour. And then into that violet colour, and just a touch of yellow. Dip my the tip of my brush in water. And I don't want it soaking wet, just enough to move the paint around. And over here in this area where the darker elements are coming in, you see I'm just dragging that over the surface. And so right down here, right up to the cliff. By using the side of a brush and where you have an area like this of <clears throat> darker colour, you've got a block. What you don't want to do 
is to have that just sat on its own. So I'll tend to work my brush like this area. And then as I've done there, just drag that brush over as well into other areas, just so that the shape isn't stuck there on its own. It's, um, it really helps to bring the painting together. Now again with this colour, I'm adding a tiny bit more white to it and just on this side, the right side where my horizon is, adding a bit of it. Yeah, oops, picked up some red there. And then I can look for other little areas where I may put a touch of this colour. <clears throat> Again, just dragging the brush over the surface so you're not committing too much of it. Much to the paper. Okay, so we'll go for probably about another 10 minutes. Um, what I want to look at now is trying to address some of the light and dark areas in the shoreline. At the moment, it's the part that I'm least happy with. I'm just going to blow my nose for a moment and I'll be back. So it's in the shoreline area that I'm least happy. And that's a lot to do with the, the elements of light and dark and trying to sort of distinguish what is the beach and the cliff. And so the area I'm going to focus on is just get, trying to get this bit of light that's coming down here. And to do that, what we want to do, if I'm looking at it, it's quite yellowy, sandy colour. So I'll start with some yellow. In this area here. Add just a touch of red to it. And then I want to get some white. Really mix that white into that yellowy orange. Now that's way too bright and yellow. So what we'll do here is try and turn it towards an earthy kind of tone. So I'm going to add a touch more red to it to make it pinker. And now I'm going to use a bit of blue. And the blue should cancel out the brightness of it. Turn it much more towards a sandy colour. I want to be careful that it doesn't turn it green. And if it does turn it green, it just means there's too much yellow. So we'll add 
a bit more red. Now I want to be very careful with this colour because it can uh, very easily overpower what we have. And I'm going to test it out, first of all, in this little area here that is just beneath the shoreline. And I'm using a very dry brush just to drag a bit of that colour there. It needs some more white in it to lighten it up. And again, just a smidgen of red. <coughs> That's more like it. So you can see that I've created this slight kind of sandy colour here. And I'm adding a touch of it there. And now I'm going to attempt to add a touch of it there. I really want to look at how the, the shape is. Often we do brush strokes determined on the shape of something. So here we were doing diagonals coming down this way, where we're doing the horizon, we're doing line horizontally across. I'm very interested in this little shape of light here because it's it seems to me, and I'm going to try this out, that it is coming sort of like that. I may be wrong. Um, let's have a look. So I'm just going to drag my brush here slightly to create that. A little bit more on top. And now with it as well, again, I'm not totally happy with that, and it may be to do with this. So this is what I'm going to try and address. For here, I want to make an orange again. It's slightly earthy, and to make it earthy, we add a bit of blue to it. Touch of red. And I'm going to see if by me adding some light now on top of, so it just needs to be stronger, um, on top of this diagonal cliff shape if that helps yes it automatically helped you can see by just adding that on top there like that and there as well now it's too orange for me yeah. so i'm just going to drag some of it up and over there. Maybe a touch there. Right. So we're running out of time. Um, as you can see, I'm still having fully mastered this bit here. I think it really needs, a, again, a much darker element bringing into it. So with a little bit of time we've got left, I am going to try and create the darkest colour I can with some blue. So we take blue, and into it add a bit of red. And straight into that, add a bit of yellow. Bit 
Right, now this would probably be completely too dark, but I want to see what having a darker element to it will do. Right, so that for me would, if I've worked it a little bit more, would make all of the difference. Again, painting is very much about figuring out your darks and your lights. And in hindsight, I think the I've got the shape of my cliff slightly <coughs> wrong, but the the majority of work that I need to do is again about getting these dark and light elements in. Colour is important, but it's not as important as tonal variety and tonal value. So I'll stop recording in a moment and just wrap this up. But as with all of the paintings I do in these workshops, it's very much a work in progress. Um, but these exercises, what they do, they just teach how to figure out a painting. Um, I choose these photographs to paint, either ones I've taken or um, ones I find online um, before the session and then you know, uh, uh, painting this for the first time. So for me, it's that working out, it's an exercise in really looking at where your dark and light areas are, how you can use brush strokes, how you can use textures and layers and different things to build that image over time. And with this, you know, I probably won't finish it off because I've, I've got lots of other things to do. But I would have learned a lot in this that I will use then in other paintings. It doesn't matter what medium I'm using. Um, each um, painting is, is a lesson for the next painting. So with this, what I would do, is maybe spend a little bit more time over here, a little bit more time here and add a a little bit more pizzazz in, into the sky, but I'm relatively happy <clears throat> with where it's at at the moment. Okay, so I'll stop recording. There we go.